are you new to small jobs business or you want to start your own small jobs business in 2024 this is that starter pack video you need like this is the ultimate video you need before you venture into small jobs business or even if you are a newbie into small jobs business this is that video that you need so let's get started everyone my name is susan and this is my vlog where i share all things craft diy lifestyle vlog room decor home decor family you just need business tips commercial recipes that people don't enjoy share on youtube and you just name it so welcome to my vlog if you are new here today and to my OGs, my yard people thank you all so much for your support thank you thank you we hit several hundred subscribers wow this could only be good and to you guys thank you all so much and to my new viewers please subscribe how can i be have, having 99 percent of viewers and very poor subscriptions please 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 help my ministry so let's dive right into the video so when i started my small jobs business i wish i knew all this that i'm i'm knowing now or that my years of experience has allocated or given me because i wouldn't have made so much mistake i made at the beginning i know this is some of the things that some beginners newbies or people who just want to venture into small jobs business find they find this very very difficult they find it hard to get some of these things i'm about to share now if you are fond of skipping videos hey you're going to miss a lot if you skip this particular video because i'm going to be sharing with you tips that no one has ever shared on youtube trust me no one so what do you need to start up your small jobs business you just finished small shops capturing school and you want to venture into the business a lot of tutors do not go into details to tell you exactly what you need to start up they don't tell you because i want you to keep calling back to ask them questions so what do you need or you want to venture into the small shops business in 2024 what do you need let me first start by telling you that small shops business is a very very profitable business although it comes with stress but it's very very profitable so the first thing you're going to need is one a recipe now if you have been following my vlog video so you know that i usually drop my no fill foolproof recipes and you need a recipe like a trusted recipe recipe that you trust now as a beginner it's okay for you to to twerk recipes and i also feel like twerking recipes but let me warn you wait first Make sure you master the recipe you are working on, the recipe given to you by your tutor or the recipe you see on my YouTube channel that are trusted recipes. Make sure you master it and make sure you understand the rule that every of these items you are using to create these treats, these small chops, you know the rule they play in that recipe before you start tweaking. It's okay to tweak, but make sure you master the original recipe. Now, if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my list, my book, so that I don't talk and miss. I miss, that's why I'm looking down. So the first thing I said is, one, you need a recipe. And the second thing is a non-stick pan. And this is my most valuable treasure when it comes to small shops catering. This is my most valuable treasure. Why? I'm going to talk at length on this non-stick pan. It is not your regular pan where you, you add little oil so that whatever you're adding into it doesn't stick this is a non-stick pan you get it at the market now the size depends on you your preference but no matter the size i usually tell people that my small chops jacket has a particular size my small chops jackets are I, either within five to seven inches in width this way be able to have the same or almost the same size for your spring roll and your samosa one is not looking bigger one is not looking smaller that's the reason why my small shops jackets have in have have a a um 
a size now if you watched my previous video you will see where i talk intensively about this i also drop the link in the description box in this video as you can see here now number one you need a recipe number two you need a non-stick pan my own non-stick pan is 10 inches in width but when i'm making my small chops jacket i generally make them within seven to seven inches in width so irrespective of how big your small chops your non-stick pan is make sure your jacket doesn't go beyond seven inches and doesn't go below five inches always put that in mind now there are rules to having a non-stick pan don't ever wash your non-stick pan with a sponge any or a metal don't use a metal spoon a metal fork or metal anything or wooden anything on the surface or the inside of your non-stick pan this is one tip that most people don't tell you don't use anything to wash any sponge or any metal object to scrape or scratch the inside of your non-stick pan so how do you clean it up i simply dip a clean foam into water either soapy or clean water depending on the process and i wipe it clean that's how i clean it and if you discover your batter or your, your yes a batter stock all around your non-stick pan simply soak your non-stick pan in water like immerse it in water for few hours not up to two hours few hours let's say two hours and then remove it and clean and those those um spring grow jacket are stuck at the side or inside we peel off we peel off easily when you're using your foam to wipe through it don't use any metal to scrape or scratch your non-stick pan now after I even usually don't allow my students to wash my non-stick pan for me. That's how very, very careful I am with that non-stick pan. Except if I see that you have someone that is very, very committed, very, very careful with, with appliances. That's when I can allow you to take care of my non-stick pan for me. That is how valuable I place my non-stick pan. Now, after you've washed your non-stick pan, you want to use a clean kitchen towel to dry it for the inside and the outside of your non-stick pan. And when you want to keep it, keep it in a place that is facing down. That is, the inside of the non-stick pan is facing down while the bottom is facing you. This is to prevent any accidental scratching of your non-stick pan. So like I said, the first thing is a recipe. The next thing is a non-stick pan. And I've told you the do's and don'ts of using your non-stick pan. I've also told you the pan size and the jacket size. Mine is 10 inches for my pants, for my non-stick pan size. And my jacket is usually within five to seven inches. The third thing you need is your, is your gas cylinder with burner or industrial gas burner. Now you see I use the word all. Oh. As a starter, and you're working at home, you need that gas cylinder that has a burner on the head. Or you simply need a, a cylinder connected to a standing gas oven. It's fine. You are a beginner. That's it. It's fine. You can have a 3 kg gas cylinder with a burner, 6 kg gas cylinder with a burner. But when you when you are working and you're having like an event to cater for, small shops catching at an event, please don't carry don't carry that to your gas cylinder with um with burner at the top it's not going to work for you that's the truth you're going to be struggling struggling with controlling the flames of coming from the cylinder struggling with um controlling your pan you know it's be it's be shaking or titling like not sitting comfortably on your burner so you do, do not want to carry that calm gas it's, it's called cam gas. You don't want to carry that cam gas to an event. So what are you going to carry? That's when the industrial burner comes into play. Like I said, as a starter, just save up for it. Save, save up for it as you have the order. But make sure you do not carry your cam gas. That is the normal gas cylinder with a burner on the top for an event. It is not going to pay you. It is not fast. You are going to be wasting resources. So this industrial gas burner usually comes and uh, it's usually fabricated if you're in nigeria it's usually locally fabricated you it's uh, it usually come out one single face or double face or triple face but you can start to do with the single face in fact it's the one face i have now it is not also compulsory to immediately go and buy that industrial burner no you can rent the people that rent that the, the vendors that are into these rentals you can also rent but in the long run it's better for you to have 
and save money for other things. So that's the third thing you need. The, the next thing is your brush. Now this brush, I'm going to divide it into two parts. One is the brush we use for our liquid butter when you want to make your small chops jackets. That liquid butter version, the one I have already have the recipe on my YouTube channel, this particular one. I'll leave the link also in the description box below this video. That brush is the white brush. The strands are is white. The brush itself is white. The strand is white. It's not the regular painter's brush. That one that has the black strand. No. The reason why we don't I don't use that is because that one is not durable. It doesn't last. And then the strand will start removing. Once you put it into liquid and you apply it on on your in your pan, the strands will start removing, and you start seeing black black like strands in your jacket. And people who don't know, we think that it's your hair, and it's not appropriate. So that's the reason why. That's one of the reasons why we go for the white one. The white is durable. The strand doesn't remove. You can use it for a very very long time. It comes in either bigger bigger form or either three inches, six inches, or smaller version. So get your brush if you're using the liquid version the liquid version of um small chops wrap is what i love using is what it works for me it's what's best for me so the pastry brush this one is literally sold in um let me give you one tip now if you want to buy that white brush please don't go to a big car store to go and buy it that's a tip because i guess to charge you an extra it's always very expensive when you go to the big car shop just go to those people who sell beauty materials in your area and vicinity and tell describe the brush for them. It's like the regular brush, but this one is white completely. That is both the handle and both the strand is white. So just tell them that you want to buy this brush. It's lesser day. At least I think it starts from 500 naira, 400 naira if you are in Nigeria. But if you go to a baker's store, you won't get that amount. It's always quite expensive. Now, the pastry brush, you can only get that at the baker's store. Where they sell baking things. That's where you can get the pastry brush. And the pastry brush usually comes in a set. Some vendors usually sell it singly. But it usually comes in a set. Now, what do you need this for? You need it for when you are applying your pastry glue or flower glue to your small chops jacket for sealing when you are folding. What do I mean by pastry glue or flower glue? Pastry glue or flower glue is simply flour or corn flour majorly flour mixed with little water to form a not so running consistency that's what i usually call pastry glue flour glue you can also extract some like i usually do when i'm doing my small chops you can always also extract some pastry glue or flour glue from your liquid small chops butter that's what i usually do to hasten the process so another thing you need is your wok or your iron cast pan. Now, I'm going to be very, very sincere here because I've been in this small shops business for over 60 years. So I'm going to be very, 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 very um, sincere. I do not subscribe to using a wood pan because number one, um, it doesn't really serve the purpose. As a beginner, you might want to start using a wood pan. The reason why you need a wood pan or an iron cast pan Iron cast pan is locally fabricated for in Nigeria. If you are in Nigeria, yes, locally fabricated. But the wok pan is what this our Asian brothers, Asian chefs, they usually use. Now it's used for deep frying when you want to deep fry, like your you know your small chops, your puff puff, spring roll, samosa. They need to be deep fried. So if you want to deep fry, you need the wok pan. Now the reason why I said I do not subscribe to using a wok pan is because if you are going for an event where you have like 100 guests to cater for, 50 guests to cater for, a work pan will not work for you. Instead, when you start getting the big, big versions, and it's very expensive, so a work pan will not work for you. So you need the iron cast pans. Now, the iron, iron cast pans, um, it can either be a small version, a medium version, or a bigger version. It depends on three things, my one, your preference. I generally tell people, you just work with Buy something you can work with. Don't go and buy a very big pan. Like me, I have a very small stash. So don't go and buy a very big pan. I let me be struggling to to use it. And don't go and buy a pan that is small. Maybe you are on the big size, it's small, and you are feeling like this is not serving its purpose. So first is your preference, what you can work with. Then number two, 
your budget if your budget goes for the small pan please go with the small pan if your budget goes for the medium or the large please go with it then like i said the events the events you you are going to cater for usually determine the kind of pan size that you get now if you are using a small pan it means you are going to use a smaller quantity of oil for frying if you are using a larger pan it means you are going to use a larger quantity of oil for frying and that's one rule you need to put place in your mind when sourcing out the pan now my um iron cast pan as a beginner i would advise to just start with a medium iron cast pan instead of the wool pan because my i use the medium for every event i've ever cut for i've used always use the medium it works perfectly for me so you can start with a medium iron cast pan and then if you can use it both at home and for events so just buy it at once so you know you have spent that money at once like you've gotten it and you've gotten it it's not like when you buy a wood pan and then when you're having an event again you are hurrying to go and get an iron cast pan I'm looking for us to get an iron cast pan yes they usually rent but in the long run it's better for you to have yours another thing is your grater so this grater it's a multi-purpose grater for me it's like a lifesaver as small as it is it's durable it serves different purposes it has different faces or teeth and it works perfectly it works perfectly for me so what why do you need this grater when i'm making spring rolls when i first started my small church business if i'm making spring roll i generally start slicing the stripes and stripes i'll not be telling you why i do that i usually start, start slicing the stripes but when i got this particular grater i'm able to shred in stripes and it makes work faster and then when you shred your carrots like when you shred your carrots in stripes you're going to have more volume than when you slice in stripes that's one protein so this time of couple grater it, and it's very very affordable it's not expensive so all this habits i have two of it you can have two you can have three. like my mom and jolly say better for you to have two at least two of one of this little little thing because you might look for one i may not see it so you just use the second one so i have two you can have two you can have three but the starter and two is up another thing is a spatula now my spatula i have two different types of spatulas i have the wooden spatula i have the silicone spatula and both of them are very durable both of them last long but if you watched my small chops recipes if you watch my ultimate meat pie sauce recipe this particular one i'll leave the link also in the description box beneath this video you are going to see that i usually use my wooden spatula to stir fry my sauce why because using a wooden spatula doesn't make your sauce get burnt that is the reason why i use a wooden spatula now you will make another shops variation or like maybe you want to do like um like pepper chicken pepper protein and the lights you may want to use a a um silicone spatula silicone spatula lasts long it's very good when it comes to the contact with heat nothing happens to it so you can get a silicone spatula it comes in different different sizes like i said it's what you can handle you should go for don't go and buy smaller ones i will be comfortable working with a bigger one you now start regretting so buy what you're comfortable comfortable working then frying spoons these frying spoons you can buy the regular frying spoons or you can buy the iron cast spoons but this one it's your preference what you want i prefer working with the regular frying spoon than the iron cast one because i i feel they're too heavy for me no matter how small they are they are too heavy for me so it depends on you then bowls as a beginner you need at least three bowls three bowls for this three bowls you can use one to mix up of puff mix like mix up of puff seven ones mix your spring roll batter if you did just puff puff and spring roll and samosa then the third one can be a smaller bowl that is for washing your hands and all that things so three at least three bowls two large bowl one small bowl then you need your your tray your tricks your tray could be plastic trays could be stainless tray it could be of any shape any size any color that depends on you at least you need three use it for prep use it to store use it for so many things so at least you need three then this is for when you are working when you are working at home i'm still going to do a video on what to need when you are going for an event but this is just like a starter pack 
what you need when you want to start a small shop's business well, as a beginner. Now, wigs. This wigs, there are different versions of wigs. There is this iron wigs and there is this particular wigs. This particular wigs that the handle, the handle has like a silicone, has like a silicone handle, is durable. When buying things, I like doing something that is durable, something that will last me for a very, very long time. So this iron, um, this particular wig is very durable. The handle comes with different, different colors, maybe not the color you want, but it's durable. It lasts very, very long. I've been using mine for, for, for up to four years now, no issues. And I'm a baker, so you can understand. I use it for both my baking work and also my small jobs business. So it's very, very durable. Now, um... It's when you keep using it, you see that the handle can detach from your shoulder. So after washing, always try to detach the handle from the wigs itself, so I can pour away any water residue inside it. So that's how I handle my wigs. Then scale and measuring cups. I don't understand why people will say that they're doing small shops and they're not measuring. I don't understand how you want to get accurate measurements. Maybe because I'm professionally a baker. Maybe that's why it always sounds strange when I hear I, I make my shops, I make my 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 batter without measuring. It sounds very strange. Please, scale and measuring cups are very, very important as a starter, as a beginner. This scale has to be a digital scale, not an analog scale. Analog scale are simply those skills that you see when you go to the frozen store. Or yes, frozen store where, or frozen shop where they sell this like turkey, chicken. That's that skill that you see there. That has one bowl on the head, which <laughs> that is always blue. Always comes in blue colors. The beef is always blue. Those are analog skill. Please avoid the skill. Doesn't give you accurate measurement. The digital skills you, you can they are, they are as cheap as two thousand five to three thousand. You can always get a, a a digital skill for that amount if you're in Nigeria and you're in Lagos. So. They are always four from that amount. Let's say two five three thousand three five. Nothing. It must not be something very fancy. But make sure you have a digital skill because your recipe for your recipe to give you the same result as your tutors or to give you the same result as mine, you must have a digital skill. The measuring cup and spoon also comes into play. Please, for that measuring cup and spoon, they also come in sets mostly. Mostly comes in sets that has um, a spoon, the spoon and the cups. Now, I generally tell people that there's some recipes that you will see that has measurements in cups and spoons, and some that you will see that have measurements in in just like grams or kg. Now, depending on the tutor, depending on the recipe you are following, most people don't convert their grams and kg to cups. So just feel that yeah, everybody should have a skill. It's, it's a basic requirement if you're going into the baking or catering business. So everybody should also have a skill. But some, like me sometimes, I generally convert to cups and spoons because I consider some of us that may not have a digital skill. So don't skip your skill measuring cups and spoon. Another thing you need is your sieve or strainer. Now, as a beginner, you need at least three. You need one small one for sieving your flour. You know this flour. You want to sieve out dirt, weevils, and all that. So you need one for sieving out flour. At least one that I use it for sieving flour. I don't use to do any other thing. I don't use to do any other thing. It's basically for my flour. So I keep it in my flour container. I don't use it for any other thing. Because when water comes in contact with, with the sieve, you have to keep it out to dry, to dry before you use it to before you bring it in contact with your flour. So please, I don't advise you to have just like one. You can have at least two, but for, for a starter, I don't advise to buy at least three. Now one, use one for your flour. The second one should be a plastic strainer. It can be a medium size, not a small small size. It can be a medium size, a plastic strainer or a plastic basket. Yes, now use this for two things. Number one, when you wash your veggies after cutting and you wash them, you need to strain out the you need to strain out water residue from them. So you need that plastic strainer. That's in one. You also need that plastic strainer when you make your sauce. Like if you watch my ultimate meat pie sauce recipe on this channel, you discover that I don't add thickener. This thickener that people usually add to their sauce, I don't add it to my own sauce because it takes away that crunch taste, that crunch effect for my sauce. Now I do not like that. So I use that plastic sieve to also strain out liquid residue in my sauce. 
that is another way my plastic basket or strainer comes into play now the third strainer you're going to need or sieve is the iron one this iron i think they call this iron then it's i think i think they call this coranda it's the iron one now this one you need it when you are frying you can also use the plastic one you need this iron one so that when you fry you have to put place this uh, your treats that is your small chops your puff puff you have to place them in this iron strainer to strain out oil residue don't just pack and serve no it's wrong make sure you put this in a strainer to strain out oil residue and if you use a plastic one it's going to melt at the long run and you do not want that that's why you use the iron one so the size depends on you but i i'll tell you to go with the medium with the medium size you can use it for both events and also when you are at home working now a pot with a lid you might be wondering where does this come into play what do i need a pot with a lid for the reason is this you need a pot you need something you need to put your iron strainer on to strain out oil residue when you are frying you know your small chops is already hot they're bringing it from the from the hot oil you need to strain out that oil so if you place something like a plastic under your iron strainer it's going to melt so it's advisable for you to place a pot now why does why must it have a lid if for instance you finish frying in the house and you have little children at home and you don't want them tampering with your oil or having any home incident please pour that hot oil into the pot and cover it and keep it in a safe place this way your oil is getting cool nobody's going to tamper with it and you're not going to have any issues of death or anything falling into it that is one now when you go for an event because i believe as you start your small shops business you're going to have people calling for events amen amen make sure you subscribe first so that prayer will work for you so as you go for events after frying you don't want to start waiting to the end of the event waiting himlessly what if you have two events to cater for that same day that happened to me before so if you have two events to cater for that same day you do not have to start waiting for the oil to get cool after frying because hey if you carry the auto it may spill on you no just pour it into that pot that pot that pot leads with a tight one cover it and you are free to leave after, after you have completed your work you are free to leave this is where the pot with the lid comes into play so at, at, with this method, you don't need to wait for the oil to get cold before you leave. That's one. And secondly, you do not have to be scared that there's going to be spillage or something's going to fall into the oil and it's going to be okay again for you to reuse. So that's why you need a pot with a lid. Now, like I would say, go for the medium size. So I've talked about a pot with a lid. Now you need airtight containers as a starter, as a beginner who is venturing into small shops business you need airtight containers you need at least three you need two big ones one small one now the two big ones you ask you to get is for when you're making um like your mixes like my puff puff mix recipe that is is this one i also need the link in the description box below this video my puff puff mix recipe if you're making a puff puff mix recipe if you're making a commercial bonds mix recipe i've asked I've asked my subscribers to tell me in the comment section if they want me to share my commercial buns mix recipe, both the mixing and the wet item. Please, if you want me to share it, tell me in the comment section. So, if you want, you're making those uh, mix, mix are just simply a mixture of dry items that you, you make in advance to make work faster for you. Surely, when you're into catering or baking business, you have heard of cake mix definitely. So, like cake mix, like puff puff mix, like corn dog mix like buns mix all those mix you need you need this air size containers to make them so as i said at least buy two at the long run you're going to definitely buy more now you also need um the small one now that small one is where you keep your yeast it should not it should not be very big a very small one where you keep your yeast yeast and hair uh they, they, they work in parallel lines and words and opposites they are not together they work in opposite direction so you want to keep your yeast in a hair tight container that and make sure it's not trapped with air there's no air inside the container and you want to store it for later trust me yeast has been something when i said my my work as a kitra back in the days it has been one ingredient that i usually get scared of but my years of experience i don't get scared of working with yeast in fact i usually put my yeast 
in in the freezer that's just for another day so and then i usually work with an instant dry yeast i felt i should drop that too so like i said in three large you need three containers one two large one one small one two for your mixes one for your yeast then you need a skewa or a cane personally i love using a cane it's i have a cane if you see this cane is 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 something you use when you are frying if you are going for an event you can't be using skewa to be stirring your shops your before when it's frying you need like a cane because of the volume of what you are frying or the quantity of what you are frying rather the quantity of what you are frying you can't use a skewa use a cane but if you are frying at the comfort of your home where the quantity is not as much as when you are working at an event you can use a skewa so you need a skewa or a cane cane is just about 100 naira skewa i think a pack is is it 500 or 700 now so then you need kitchen knives you need knife at least get one one kitchen knife i don't think i need to tell you what you need to use knife for use it for prepping veggies slicing protein and all that please we hear the word protein from me it means meat i'll be another video we have to talk about terminologies in small chops business so they need a manual or elect electric blender if you are in nigeria where we have constant light failures please the manual blender is needed very very necessary because you want to blend pepper you want to roughly blend pepper and that is when the power holding company just decided they're not bringing like that <laughs> and they get you don't have any gen i'm i'm considering like they're just starting you don't have a gen or something to power your electric blender that is where the manual blender comes in play and they are more affordable than the electric blender if you can get the two if you can't get one and the one i will ask to get is the manual blender because it works all ways whether there's light or there's no light but make sure you're getting something that is durable make sure you get something that you need is your another thing you need is your shopping board the size doesn't matter either a wooden one a plastic one it's your choice so a, a shopping board i use my shopping board not just to prep my veg, my veggies that is to cut or to slice no not just to prep my veggies i use my shopping board so when i'm doing my spring roll and samosa folding so keep my work environment clean so i know that the bulk of the load is on my shopping board if you don't have a shopping board or if you can't get a shopping board you can use a tray it doesn't have sides like a flat very flat tray it's okay too but please if you can't get a shopping board then the pizza or chin chin cutter this is highly highly important if you are working on spring roll and samosa you need a pizza cutter it usually comes with a wheel they usually come also in different sizes that are the small medium please guess what is comfortable for you to work with and what is okay with your budget then you need a gas lighter and matchstick box i did not say all oh, i said and now if you're working at the comfort of your home that is you're just making small chops from me you have an order and you're working from home the package to deliver you can use a matchstick just get a matchstick to strike and for your calm gas. But if you're working at an event, please don't go with matchstick. <laughs> I wish I knew this years back when I started my small shops business. Don't go with matchstick. Go with a gas lighter. You know when you're working at an event, there is already tension. Please, when need small shops, they are like, when need shops, they need this, they need that. And you want to always be in control. So... If, if, for instance, your industrial burner, maybe you put it off or you reduce the flame and it accidentally, the flame accidentally goes off and you want to, you want to put on the flames again. You know, the burner is already hot. There's, there's already heat all around. If you use a martial light at that point, you're going to, the heat is going to transfer to you because you'll be, you'll be so close to the flame, to the heat. So a gas lighter is appropriate it prevents you having that direct contact with heat please please and also be careful when working with it though be careful because you don't want to have any gas incidents or accidents at home they need apron i can't buy for sizes whether you're working at home or you're working at an event you need an apron because you don't want your your the outfit you wore to have the 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 aroma <laughs> The, the scent of 
whatever you've been frying. So you need an apron. Then you also need uh, hand towels. As a beginner, you need at least two to three hand towels. We know what hand towels are meant for. As a beginner, you need two to three hand towels. Then you need hair bonnets or mosca. I use the word all. If you're working at an event and you don't have a customized face cap or a customized headwear, then you need a nose cap. That nose cap is disposable. It's also not expensive. Some vendor sell per one. Some vendor sells in dozens. Some vendors, you can also get the book. But as a starter, you can just get a dozen for yourself. As if you are having an event to do outside. And But if you're working in the in the house, at least you have, you have an order to, to set up at home, you can always cover your hair with your hair bonnets. It's has become... I'm, I'm so accustomed to putting something on my head. That's why I'm either with a face cap or with uh, a crochet uh, cap or something. Something was always, is always on my head. I'm used to it already because if you're working at home, don't say, oh, I'm working at home. I don't need to. Please always try to cover your hair because hair strands can in interfere with whatever you're making. Then, priceless sample. I'm dropping my priceless sample here so that you can see it. Yes. Price list sample. This is one one thing that beginners are always having issues with. How do I price my small shops? How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I know how much to charge for a tray? I know that. I also have a video on how to price your small shops. I will definitely. But I'm dropping my sample here so you can see. I have a price list sample. Now, what I, I, I did for when I started my small shop business is when I have an order for something I've not produced before. Or something I've not produced in a while. That is when I first started. Something I've not produced in a while. And somebody just told me, I need you to give, I need you to supply me um, 20, 20 pieces of uh, of uh, beef and gizzard kebab. And I've not done that in a while. But I want to stay with the current trend. That is, that is the current market trend. What do I do? I immediately go to Instagram. Go and search for small chops vendors. See their current price list. Compare them. And then... And then, like, make it to suit my own and give my my clients my price, the price. So that is one tip. That is one way you can you can start as a as a newbie in the small shops business. Now, this is my own price list. This is the core my current price list as of twenty twenty four January. This is my current price list. So you can adapt adapt this, or you can upgrade it or format it to suit your preference, to suit your location. And all that so you need a price list sample and a quotation sample please don't be in a hurry to give your customers prices always take your time so that you do not make mistake you don't start using your personal money to fund a client's order I'm not saying sometimes you can't but let it be that your clients payment is footing their order then um book you need a book and a pen. <laughs> why is this sounding important? Or why is it like eh, it's a normal thing? So people may not know. Now, let me show you something. This. See so this jota. This is my treasure. Apart from my Gnostic pan, this is my second treasure. I don't joke with this. When people sign up for my small shops classes, either online or on site, and they ask me, Susie, how many how many pieces of puff puff does 500 gram of of butter gives me and i told them an accurate um quantity they are taking about like taking like wow sometimes my colleagues in the small shops business usually ask me please i want to make samosa and spring roll how many quantities do i need for 100 people how many quantities of butter do I need for 100 and i tell them that this is the quantity you need i like wow how do i come up with such number it's not a guesswork my years of experience has gained me that's one now, two, I have this book. It can be a jota, I can name it anything. I call mine, let me see, let me see if this. Okay, I call mine Baking Logistic. So it also covers my baking business, Baking Logistic. What I do is, if I make 250 grams of small chops butter, I make 250 grams of small chops butter, and I'm making the small chop size. You Nobody know, have the small chop size, I have the big size of puff puff. If I'm making the small chop size of puff puff, I'll be counting. Once I'm through, 
I write that number. Okay, 250 gram of small chop of, of 250 gram of puff puff mix with the small chop size gave me this quantity. If I'm making small chops like spring roll and samosa and I make, let's say, 750 gram of butter, I will say this 750 gram of butter gave me these pieces of spring roll wraps. That is how I started building my baking logistic booklets. So as a small business owner or as a beginner, as a starter, a newbie in small shops business, don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. I don't joke with this booklet. I don't drop it carelessly. Now, when I have an order, so it tells you, Susie, I need you to supply 500 packs of small chops. I don't need to start stressing myself and start running around or going to Facebook group to be asked, please, what what you give me? I don't need to. I just go to my logistic. Okay, if 250 gave me 50 or um, 24 for my small chops, that means I'll need times to get this. So if I'm going to need about 50, I'll usually do like two or three extras. I hope this is making sense. So always have some a book where you usually write your yield from a particular recipe or a particular quantity. And then the final thing, final. Now, if you've been watching this video to this point and you have not yet subscribed, please now help, 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 and join our yard people. Please, please subscribe. Leave me a comment. I love re reading your comments. No matter if you watched my previous video, you see that no matter how much or how plenty your comments are, I usually personally reply to them. And I pray that as my channel keep growing, I le keep leaving me comments. I'll have the time to keep replying to every comment because your comments means a lot to me. It tells me exactly if I'm deliberate. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just leave me a comment. Leave me anything. Ask me how are you. <laughs> Just leave me something in the comments. Even if it's an emoji, please leave me something in the comments. Okay. Finally, branding. As a starter, branding is important. There are already big names in the small shops business. There are already big names in the small shops business. They are just coming into the business. You need to brand. Brand, apart from the taste of my shops, another aspect I don't joke with is branding. Now, for branding, you need to have a, a business name registered okay let's say i'm just starting now i don't have money please try and register your business if you need help with business and registration you can ask me leave me a comment in the comment section i help people register a small business with cac so if you need help leave me a comment in the comment section if you are in nigeria i'll do that if you are not in nigeria make sure your business is registered under a regulatory body make sure you have it registered i know it has a lot of money involved but please try to get your name registered because it doesn't make sense after working with a particular brand name for a while and they are ready for a registration only for it to be told by your filing agent that sorry your name has been taken i have already built a name around this a brand rather around this name it doesn't make sense so you want to make sure your name is registered branding branding now after registering your name, please get a sticker. Don't joke with a sticker. Get a sticker. Your sticker should contain your name. You contain your logo. Should contain your your social media handles, Instagram or or Facebook or TikTok or Thread, whichever one. You should contain your phone number, your location, and maybe a tagline. Please keep it simple, attractive, readable, and cachy. Don't use an off color. And make sure when they're printing for you. Like, if you don't have to design your logo or anything, don't worry. When you go to the printing press, they usually design. Like here in Lagos, where I am, they design for, they design for you for 500 naira per design. So it's affordable to design and then they'll print for you your stickers. Now, when they are printing your stickers for you, don't allow them to print just a regular paper sticker for you. Because when it comes in contact with water, it will tear. Don't allow them to print a regular paper sticker for you. Tell them you want to print S-A-V. S A V. This particular one, once once it comes in contact with water, it doesn't say it has this glossy look at the face. So make sure it's on S A V. That is the that's what I usually use to do all my printing. Don't use a regular paper sticker. Then, as you keep working, try to get a banner because, like I told you, you are going to definitely have works to cater for events. They're going to call you to come and fry. To come and serve at an event definitely definitely so you are going to try to save up 
to create a banner. It must not be a very big banner, but let's just have a moderate medium banner. This way, your 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 details are on the banner. So when you go for an event, you just have to place it at your stand, and people will get to know that oh, this person that is working. So I hope I've been able to list out a give. I, I hope I'm able to give a comprehensive list of all the things you need before starting your small shops business or as a starter or a newbie in the small shops catering world and i hope you really enjoy this video and thank you so much for watching to this very moment see you in my next video bye, -bye.